Welcome back to DBS and the DFL studio along with my guests Victor Reed and Chris Taylor. Later we'll be joined by Reds Pereira. Now, Victor, what is your responsibility as Director of Sports or would you prefer me to ask what is the responsibility of the Ministry of Sports and, you know, and your role, whichever you prefer? Uh, well, the, the ministry, I think it's mm -hmm. more important that for, in terms of the ministry's responsibility and role um, in, 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 the, in the development of sport. Um, the ministry really um, provides the environment in an optimum, try to provide an optimum environment for, for sportsmen to thrive in. And um, we, we, we try to do this by providing some financial support to the national so associations and national bodies responsible for sport in St. Lucia. Um, we also have the, the district youth and sports councils which are responsible for sport in their locality, example in Denry and Labria and Sofri and Shuzel and Beaufort and so on. Um, we also provide um, sporting facilities. It's, it's our responsibility to build for, for them sporting facilities and to, to maintain them. Um, we give the management of those facilities to the, to the, the different organizations at the district level. Um, government is responsible for providing national um, facilities like both Asia Cricket Ground, the stadium, the Minifield Park, you know, those that are of regional international um, standards and to ensure that solutions can compete at any level um, in the world. Um, one, of our, uh, one of our key responsibilities too is to, is to develop policies, um, government policies that would govern how sport is developed, um, how sport is seen in the country, um, also to provide, you know, um, the school system with a, 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 a fantastic um, sporting program that will help young persons um, become sports conscious, um, take sports seriously, and want to excel at the international level also. And there are a number of other things that we do to facilitate the development of sport. But these are the major issues and the major factors that, that we, 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 um, we, we try to facilitate. Is it um, because, I mean, that, that's quite a wide brief. I know this, this saying, it's hard to please all of the people all the time, certainly must come to play when it yeah. comes to your role. Yeah. What would you say is a, one of the most difficult things it is you know, for you to, to manage in the sports arena in St. Lucia? I think it's our, it's our, our people. Um, sadly, in St. Lucia, I don't think that the, the communities that people give the kind of um, credence to support that it, that it deserves. Um, the importance of sport in our society and how it can develop our society, how it can develop our people. Um, people see sport as now for now, you know, I want to enjoy a football game, I want to, you know, have some fun, but they don't see sport as a lifelong, you know, activity that can help develop you physically, keep you healthy, and also develop you as a person. Um, right now, in, in, in the world now, sport is a multi-billion dollar, you know, um, you know, opportunity for persons, you know, you can make money, you can in a living, you can get a career in sport. Mm -hmm. And that because you're from St. Lucia, a small island, that you cannot be, have a career in sport. If you do the right things here, you can manage a, 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 a football club like Manchester United. Anywhere in the world you can manage, you can, you can, you can be a coach, you can be an administrator, you can do anything in sport anywhere in the world. With technology now, that, that you can see what's happening in the rest of the world, and you can pursue those, those careers also. So I think our people have not appreciated the value of sport and how much it can help us as a, as a country develop, how it can help young people become more sophisticated in how they think and how they can, you know, they can use sport to bring them forward you know, and, and empower the rest of the world. Thank you. And Chris, I'm hoping that you can supplement that by, <laughs> <laughs> by uh, promoting you know, what you do in terms of sports. And of course, we'd yeah. like to know what your frustrations are, but yes. let's, let's talk about you know, what you do. Um, for me, my first and most important role probably will be um, the coaching of the kids. Um, teaching the kids just the basics of golf and fundamentals go with the game and also just the discipline, the etiquette, everything else that goes with the sport, um, which helps them mature as a person both on and off the, the golf course. Um, that is probably my most important role that I have taken on up to now. But what are um, the children gaining? When you say the children, from which, which ages? Are um, we. In the, in the junior golf club, um, we teach kids age from 5 to 17. Um, so we start at 5 purely because they, you know, that's about when most parents are ready to leave their kids in the hands of someone else to teach them. Um, and then up to 17 because at 18 um, in the golf world, you're considered an adult at that point. Mm -hmm. um, just like I think in most sporting worlds. Um, and then secondary to that, I, I find myself being pulled into the, the administrative political side of, of <laughs> golf and, and sports here on some things which is not really my intention but for me I want to try and make a difference so in order for 
to make a difference, you've got to go some of those routes sometimes. Mm -hmm. Now, when you say, you know, the advantages for children, I mean, what, what advantages do young children have playing such an adult sport like golf? Well, um, it teaches you, I mean, not only about yourself, um, you know, how to have patience, um, self-respect, confidence, uh, maturity, um, how, to, how to actually just speak with people, and interact with people, not just from your culture, but from every culture in the world. Um, golf is one of the few sports that you can start as young as five and play up to your 100, um, or as long as you can really physically be active. Mm -hmm. um, so it's, it's one of the only few sports that you can play your entire lifetime, whether, whether you're good or bad, you're still going to enjoy it because golf has a, you know, has a handicap system, um, which basically equals all golfers out no matter your ability. So it's, it truly is a game for a lifetime. Mm -hmm. Now, what would you say to people who say, well, golf is just for uh, people who can afford it, yeah. especially, I mean, that's something yeah. that you can't get away from. No, not at all. Is it, is it expensive? Um, some places it is, yes, I, I have to agree, some places it is. Um, and the stigma with golf has been it is a, you know, a rich person's sport. And in recent years, um, like I said before, especially with Tiger Woods coming along, he has made it, he has made it accessible to a lot of other people. And then there's certain other programs that have, and not just programs, but charity um, foundations who have taken it on and, and tried to introduce it to less fortunate people um, who may not have ever had a chance to experience it had they not been introduced to it, which is a great thing. Um, and I think the part that makes it probably expensive um, nowadays is the privately owned facilities because um, they want to charge their fees because they want to make their, their money, obviously, with it being a private entity. And <coughs> I think the one part which could help here in St. Lucia is possibly of, of having some sort of government funded or public places, so to speak. Yes. Um, because most countries you go to, you have a public golf course or a public driving range, things like that. And they're either free or very, very low cost, a few dollars to be able to go and play. And down here, unfortunately, we only have well, really the one main public course, which is St. Lucia Golf and Country Club. Mm -hmm. um, there is another small course at um, the Sandals Resort. However, that is obviously a Sandals Resort. Um, so we don't really have the facilities here in St. Lucia to, to appeal to everybody, um, no matter your, your level of income. And the bang goes the main reason why Chris <laughs> Taylor is on <laughs> Delo Factor Live, uh, because he can talk to Victor Reed and try and sort this out. Yes. And I really hope that there, there is uh, an open communication between the two of you yeah, here, yeah. because, yeah. you know, I have to say, I mean, I play golf since I've been in St. Lucia. I haven't just yes. because I've been busy and so on, but I remember being really relaxed yes. and also being more patient. I was thinking the other day, when I was in London, I was more patient than I was here. <laughs> you know, and I tried to blame the people. <laughs> yes. But really, it's, it's your pastime. The things that yes. I was doing, the sporting things that I was doing that made me feel more healthy and calm yeah. me down, I'm not doing as much here. And yeah. I, as you were talking, I thought, yes, yeah. uh, I think that that has a, a part to play. So that's one of your frustrations, Chris. W yeah. What are your other frustrations? Um, a little bit. Some frustrations are, you know, just the lack of, I guess you could say, assistance or, you know, support um, from your from some of the golfing community I guess you could say um, you know a lot of the a lot of the people members people that I grew up around uh, they're very supportive and so forth um, but we're still we're still wanting a little bit more support from I guess you could say our governing association Mr. Reid um, any response no we give support to yeah. to, to the national associations I yes. mean we don't have um, you know a, a farm with money you know we, we prepare a budget based on, on, on we, when we receive uh, money from the Ministry of Finance, then we have to reallocate um, and based on the programs, the, the, the level of, act of activity by, the, uh, by the, the, the national body. So we give some support to the, to the bodies. We don't have the kinds of monies that they would need. Um, you know, it's very expensive to, to, to put a training program on and to participate in regional and international events. So we try our best to see how we can give the support. I think one of the main thrusts for us is, is the national bodies devising and developing, you know, and implementing training programs here in St. Lucia to get young persons to take on the sport seriously, to give them professionally, you know, a professional type of training that will help them, you know, develop as, as, an, as an athlete that, that will develop in the United States or in England or any other country. Mm -hmm. and, and like I said, we have the potential, we have the natural athletes in St. Lucia. All the coaches who come to St. Lucia from England and the U.S. and, from, and so on, they always say, that our kids have a, an advantage. They have this natural ability mm -hmm. that the kids in their countries do not have. And they, ha they wonder why it is that we are not you know, much more further in terms of sport development. And I think it's because of how we, how we, we coach, how we train our kids, how people see sport. 
and so they not really put the kind of effort behind it that those other people would put you know, behind sport. In Africa, in Brazil, sport is seen as a way out of poverty, out of the ghetto, and the, 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 their lives depend on, on performing at the highest level in their country. And based on this, they may they'll make it to, to other clubs everywhere else. In St. Lucia, our kids, you know, have everything. You know, they have everything they need, so there's no need to fight and to want to use sport to get, you know, to, to, to get a free scholarship, to get a scholarship, to do to, to progress. You know, not many young people see that as a way out. Now, you are, you, are you saying that the onus is on the sporting associations <coughs> to try to get that together and not the actual Ministry of Sports to say to the associations, why don't you guys come up with something? Or have you already yeah, said I that? Think, I think we say that every year. We, we, I mean, their, their mm. mandate is to develop the sport, to, you know, to, to, to bring a level of consciousness to, to the St. Lucians, to develop the technical aspect of the sport, to get national teams to represent St. Lucia, and to, to, and to get those persons to, 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 to perform at the highest level, mm -hmm. to be competitive. And one of the things I think we say is that we, we may not win, but when we go out there, we need to be competitive so people respect us as, as a sporting nation. We have to, that, that's a first, the first step for us. And then we can think, once we have achieved that goal, then we can now start to think of actually winning. Um, and, and that's a reality, that mm -hmm. you know, we don't have the expertise, we don't have the finance, we don't have the numbers like the other countries have. So, but we have the ability to compete against those countries in a very respectable way. And that is what we need to aim to do now, to go out there and show that we, have, we are forced to reckon with and develop our art, develop our, uh, a way mm -hmm. of becoming number one in, in the world. And I think our associations and our people need to, to sit down and think of how they, we can use sport to develop people, to, to use it as a means of development of persons in their own personal lives, mm -hmm. get educated, and to do those things, you know, in, you know, in the context of St. Lucia. Mm -hmm. I'd like Chris to respond to that in a second. We're going to a break, but I really would like you to, to respond to that. Um, and let me just remind everyone about the giveaway tonight. Caribbean Blue Naturals by Natmed Limited is giving away one of their exciting new all-natural spa gift sets. One lucky winner will have a choice of coconut craze, mango madness, papaya bliss, sumptuous passion fruit, or heavenly vanilla. And each gift set contains a body scrub, massage oil, and a body lotion, which is a perfect gift for you or that special someone. But tonight, uh, we are going to be giving away this lovely bag with some products inside it. And what I said before, we're actually going to be giving away for Mother's Day. So just just give all the answers, all right? You may be really lucky. Here's the question. Natmed Limited is the manufacturer of two brand name product ranges that are made in St. Lucia. The first one is Natmed Herbals. What is the other? The first one is Natmed Herbals and what is the other? As we go to the break, can you name these St. Lucian sportsmen and women and name their disciplines all right so you're going to see some pictures on the screen shortly but when you do we want you to name them and I'll also name their disciplines here we are there are the pictures on the screen easy it was easy 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 oh come on don't tell me you don't know who that is okay so their names of course who's that their names and also their disciplines all right this is the law factor live on dbs we'll be right back and when we do come back we'll be taking your calls